You are watching Beef TV this Thursday, the 9th of May. And we know Queensland is the country's biggest beef producer, but let's head over to the west, Western Australia, and take a look inside the beef empire of billionaires Andrew Twiggy and Nicola Forrest. Ben Dwyer is the chief operating officer of Harvest Road. Ben, thanks for coming on the show today. Thanks, Andrea. How would you describe the growth of Harvest Road's beef farm in recent years? Uh, simply... It would be pretty rapid. So the family bought Harvey Beef um, several years ago and then bought Mindaroo Station back and they were run very separately as en different enterprises. And then uh, the family, Andrew and Nicola, decided that they wanted to build an integrated beef supply chain to showcase West Australian beef. And so we started putting some breeding places together, uh, backgrounding properties, and then they built the state's largest feedlot, which we uh, commissioned in 2022. And then feeding what we can down to the down to the meat work. So we're, we're very small for the kill at Harvey. The back end is only about 14% of the total kill. So it's a very small integration, but it's very important for us. You've also been on a big buying spree of late, <laughs> snapping up some places and returning one at least to Aussie hands. Yeah, well, both, both the big acquisitions were back to Aussie hands. So that was pretty exciting. Uh, Springvale and which is in the East Kimberleys, just out of Halls Creek, and then Balfour, which is north of Newman, in the, uh, in the East Pilbara. So they were pretty exciting acquisitions to bring home, and we're putting a lot of uh, energy and effort into those properties. What have you done to change them? Um, the biggest change we'll be making is the genetic herd. So uh, up at Springvale, we're converting the herd to an ultra-black herd, which is quite unique when we're going back to a Boss Taurus-based animal in the Kimberleys. So Brahmin have been the dominant breed up there for quite a while. And we're doing that for fertility. Um, so a big part of our ESG drive is to try and get every animal that is on farm for us producing. So we reduce emissions and eating quality index for the, for the end game. And at Balfour, taking a very good red uh, Brahmin drought master herd and we're putting a composite bull over that herd. Again, driving fertility and EQI and marbling through the herd. And in terms of, uh, I guess, how it fits more broadly as part of Harvest Road, you were touching before in terms of the integrated uh, supply chain there. Yeah, so that we, breed, we breed where we think the best opportunity is to breed and then everything heads south towards the meatwork. So um, breed in the north, background sort of in the Pilbara and the Gascoigne and in some farming land north of Perth around uh, Durian Bay and Mora, the feedlots at Mora, and then they get on a truck down to south of Perth to Harvey we process them. What's the overall goal here? Is there a lot more room for growth? I think our biggest growth is in partnering with the producers in WA um, to probably value add the herds and the, and the lands that we have available to us to produce cattle. Um, I don't think we've got a lot more growth from acquisitions within Harvest Road. We'll bed down what we've got. Uh, try You've and got get enough those land on your hands at the moment. At the moment. Um, you know, if something, if something, if an opportunity came up and Andrew and Nicola had the desire to purchase it, we'd, we'd put it forward. But I think our biggest desire is to build the, build the state's confidence in, in good quality beef and international markets. Um, you've obviously spent a lot of time in big beef companies here in Queensland. Yeah. How would you compare the two experiences between the two states? Or the way oh, that the state of play for their beef industry, shall we say? It's very, it's very different. So WA's been, for the last 20-odd or 30 years, very much a live export, uh, particularly in the north um, industry, where I think Queensland's ha is still got, got a large focus on live export, and it's very important to us as a beef producer to have multiple markets. But we see bigger processes in the, in the east and, and a bigger herd. So it's quite challenging going back to the west. It's quite low carrying capacity country, particularly in the, in the arid rangelands. Um, so it's converting that to, to more profitability and productivity, so that's quite exciting. I started a management career in WA at Springvale, which we've just brought back, so it's a little bit like going home. circle, isn't it? Yeah, it is. In terms of WA, with that focus on live X, do you, what direction do you believe the state will head with beef? Oh, look, it's really hard to gauge. I mean, they've They've made it a fraud into trying to um, ban sheep live export in the state, and I don't think that's gone so great for the producers or the overall um, goal of banning the live export. So I think hopefully the 
the state government and the federal government are probably having a good look at how that may play out. Um, but I think all beef producers should be looking for the best proper possible long-term markets we can feed into. So, you know, I think it's, live exports are important for the Australian beef industry, but uh, we're, we're under a lot of pressure all the time in, the, in that space. So, What's the sentiment among producers over there at the moment? Uh, Even in, the beef in, producers? <laughs> well, beef producers are probably watching the space very closely, and I think the lamb or sheep producers in the state are quite upset. Uh, that, and it's come in to play with a really poor season throughout most of the sheep areas in WA as well. So it's put a lot of pressure on. Um, there's huge amounts of sheep being exported to the east from WA at the moment. So, you know, their sentiment isn't that great over there at the moment in the sheep, sheep uh, industry. But uh, beef industry, I think they're probably being taking a forward foot and looking at what the market availability will be if something does come into that, uh, into that space. Now, big thing everyone's talking about at the moment is staff. How do you attract, how do you retra uh, retain them, rather? What are you guys doing? Um, well, we're, we're all in the same boat. and it, is a, it, it does seem to be a tougher environment to draw good or experienced staff that want to stay in the industry. It's a fantastic industry to be in, um, but it is quite hard work. Um, we, we, we certainly haven't got the model right yet. We are a young business, so we... We're pushing hard and we're probably churning a few people through, unfortunately, but it's trying to identify the people that really want to be in the industry and, and maintain them, so show them that there's a career path. The beauty of integration and in a previous role with ACBH and ACC, you know, you can go from breeding to backgrounding, feeding, into the meatworks, and there's a multitude of tasks in the meatworks, and, it, you know, when you say the word meatworks, everyone just thinks it's quite a negative, but it's quite an exciting space. A lot of technology going into the plants across Australia and then, and then we've got the meat marketing part of the business as well so um, we're trying to expose as many of our rising stars if you like to the whole industry and get them uh, enjoying the beef industry. We're quite lucky in, in the west that it's a beautiful place to operate so our Kilbra, Pilbara and Kimberley properties are fantastic scenery to muster in um, so that's you know that's a real draw card and we've got a really big horse focus so we um, we, we use every we use helicopters and motorbikes, but the horse focus, and it's really getting back to good stockmanship. So taking the stress out of it. Everyone says about taking the stress out of it for the cattle. I think it's more taking the stress out of it for the guys that are working. So we have a bit of a focus on that. Yeah. So we won't be drawing you back to Queensland anytime soon. Not in the short term, no. <laughs> good on you. Hey Ben, how's your beef week experience been? It's been fantastic. Look, it's, I've been coming to beef probably since the first one. Such a great networking opportunity. Um, for everyone, you don't walk five metres without running into someone you haven't seen for a while, so that's quite exciting. Late nights, early starts, that gets a bit hard, the older you, older you get. But I, the display of uh, tech um, products that we can use in the industry, it's, it all comes together and you, you see so many new things, so it's fantastic to see that every three years. So we've brought a bit of a team over from the West, tried to infiltrate the... Uh, Beef Week with Harvest Road shirts, and it's been fantastic. But, yeah, it's been great so far. Ben, thanks for your time on Beef TV. Thanks, Andrea. Well, they're the future of the industry, and today 